Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Michelle Nelson, and I'm the social media content specialist here at Field Routes. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us for Who Needs Training Anyway? Joining us today is Shell Hartzer, consulting entomologist at 360 Pest and Food Safety Consulting. Before we get started, I'll give you a bit of background on her. Shell Hartzer has been working with the pest management industry for more than a decade. She supports pest control companies with expert troubleshooting, up-to-date technical information, and quality training. Her assistance in solving pest problems faster and more effectively allows her clients to increase employee retention while reducing callbacks and bad reviews. Hartzer serves as a consulting entomologist at 360 Pest and Food Safety Consulting and holds a Bachelor of Science in Entomology with a concentration in wildlife conservation from the University of Delaware. She also earned a Master of Science in Entomology from Kansas State University. She's a board certified entomologist in urban and structural entomology, a preventative controls qualified individual and Lean Six Sigma Green Belt holder. Welcome, Shell. There we go. Hi, thank you. It's always that mute button that gets us, isn't it? All right, let's get things started here. It is so good to have all of you here. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to, to be here and do this. And, you know, I do a lot of different trainings. You know, I, I've tr probably hundreds of trainings on different types of urban pest. Um, different aspects of integrated pest management. I, I've done specialty trainings for museums and zoos. I think this is the first time I've ever done a training on training. So this is exciting. This is different. This is new. Um, and, you know, when we talk about training, you know, who needs training? Spoiler alert, everybody. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Goodbye. Um, no. <laughs> Everybody does need me training. Um, and a couple years ago, I actually did a market research study and asked a whole bunch of people in the pest control industry, um, from owners down to techs, even some office staff, um, everybody in between from all across the US. And the underlying theme with all the questions that I was asking them that everyone came back with was training, training and communication. Those were the two biggest things that they identified in our industry that we needed more of, that we needed better of, that, that we just weren't getting it, weren't getting it right. So with that, then how do we do it? Um, we know that people want it. We know that people are interested in it. So, you know, with that, why do, why do we do it? You know, why, why do we do training? Who needs training? I just said everybody needs training. So why? Because we have a lot of new people. Uh, you know, we, we had the, the great pandemic and we lost a lot of people. A lot of people downsized. Now we're all looking for more employees. We're looking for those new technicians. And most of them coming to the pest control companies do not have any experience. And that's fine but we have to have that training for them so that they can get the basics so that they can get that understanding so they understand why they're doing what they're doing and of course we've got the folks that have been here for 20 30 years and i've been doing this my whole life i know how this works <sighs> yeah 30 years ago things were a little bit different we, we've had some changes in the last 20 to 30 years so we need to refresh or train, uh, reiterate some of these things for employees that have been there for quite a while. And of course, we've got people like me that are just total overachievers and like, give me more, give me more. I want more training. I want to learn something new. Um, those overachievers like me, we just, we soak it up. Um, you know, when I mentioned that everybody needs training, I need training. Um, I hold a couple certifications. A lot of you folks are, are holding licenses. I have my, my Georgia applicator's license. My board certification has to be renewed every couple of years. I need to have additional training in order to keep those certifications 
and keep them going. So again, everybody, we can kind of break them down into these three groups. And of course there's some overlap in there, but everybody really needs this kind of training. So why? Why do we do trainings? And we popped up a little poll question there. So take a second and uh, look at that while I ramble on about training. I should, I should go back through my records and see how many trainings I've done. It's, I can't even count them anymore. I think I, I, I lost track, so. But they're always fun um, and they're always a little bit differently. I, I have this problem where I cannot do the same presentation twice. So, all right, so most of you said that within the last month, you've been to something really engaging, something that, that struck you, something that stuck with you. That's, that's impressive. Um, so congratulations, um, that's, that's awesome for you folks. So why do we do training? We do training to refresh ourselves. I, again, if you're holding a pesticide applicator's license or some other type of license, you may need that refresher training. That may be part of continuing to hold that license. So when were the last time your folks had a training on cockroaches? You know, have they just been doing this for 20 years and thinking it's the same thing? Or do we need to do a little bit of updating? There's always new information coming out. Researchers are still working on our past, even though our past has been around for hell, millions of years in some cases, there is still new research. We just had research get published that, that uh, bed bugs are now a major source of histamines. We knew that cockroaches could cause those allergies. Now they're finding out that bed bugs can too. So this new research, and maybe it's new products, maybe it's a new pest. Uh, for those of you on the East Coast, you're dealing with spotted lantern, lantern flies. Um, and those are a major, even though they're not like a pest, a structural pest that's going to harm people or harm their structures, it's that occasional invader that they're gonna get into structures and it's not pretty. So new pests, new science, new products. I mentioned compliance, if you're holding any type of license, you probably need those continuing education units to maintain those licenses. Um, my board certification, I have to renew that every three years. And I think I need 140 credits that uh, in, in like eight different categories to maintain that. So yeah, depending on what you have and what you need, you're gonna need some CEUs for that. You may have some customer requirements. I do a lot of GMP training, uh, good manufacturing, good manufacturing practices training uh, for anybody working in food industry, food processing, food storage, anything like that. Uh, it's usually a requirement coming from your customers that you must be GMP trained. Um, and there may be some additional company requirements. Uh, your company may determine that you have to have respirator training because you use respirators, um, ladder training, anything like that. So you're gonna have all of these requirements to keep you in compliance and all that goes to training. And consistency. This is a tricky one because all of our pest situations are a little bit different, but at the same time, there's consistency in the generalities of what we do. And if you have one person, you know, let's take cockroaches, you have one person who's only using bait and you have one person who's only using liquid residuals, is that really the best way to go around it? Um, you know, so to maintain some consistency in how we deal with these pest problems, to make sure that we're dealing with them in the most effective and fast way possible. And sometimes training can be fun. Hopefully by the end of this, you guys think that you may have had a little fun. I don't know, I always have fun with this. So that's why we do these trainings. Um, and I'm sure there's a few other reasons. So what's the pushback? We, we just said that everybody needs training. Everybody wants training. We've got different categories. The problem always comes down to two things, time and money, and time is money. So then the question is, how do we get around this? How, how, do we, how do we get from that point that everybody wants it, everybody thinks it's, it's needed to actually getting it done and getting around these problems? So breaking down some of these problems a, a little bit further, I uh, hear all the time that, you know, I don't need to go to training because it's the same old boring topic. I've heard about cockroaches for the last three years. You know, I, I don't need it. I heard it. I'm good. So you get those same old boring topics again and again and again with nothing new put in there. Um, sometimes getting experts to talk is a challenge. Uh, I work with a lot of state associations and sometimes getting a high quality speaker in there, 
means that money. And if the state association doesn't have that money, they've got to go to maybe some backups that maybe aren't as preferable. I don't know. And you know, how do we test retention? How do we make sure that some of this is getting through? Some of it is, is getting into the heads and sticking there, especially if it is something new, if it's new research or a new product, any of that, that has to stick somehow. We also come across the problem of, oh, sorry, another poll question, there we go. Um, so we also come across the problem of adult learning. And we know that adult learning is much different than school kids, high school kids, college kids, any of that. So it, it is different and we have to think about it different if we want them to have that retention, if we want them to pay attention. And there we go, see, just reinforces what, what I said at the beginning with my market research study last year or a couple years ago now, you, you all think, pretty much that they need additional training. So yeah, it is so important because that additional training can really improve a lot of things on the bottom line. But with adult learning, we know that us adults um, have the attention span of a goldfish. Thank you, TikTok. Uh, we prefer single topics. So we don't wanna get confused with, we're gonna talk about cockroaches and flies and rodents and, and small flies and spiders today. Stick to one thing, because that, that's going to stick better. They're going to learn better from that, having just that single topic. Today, we're going to focus on cockroaches. We also know that adult learners um, were a little hesitant. You know, we've, we've lost that childhood drive of, I'm just going to throw out my hand and throw out an answer, and who cares if it's wrong? Now we're afraid to be wrong, like something's going to happen. We're going to get struck by a bolt of lightning if we don't answer a question right. But we do have this underlying fear as adults, we don't wanna be wrong. We don't wanna raise our hand, we don't wanna risk it. And we also need to relate. Um, it has to be a story. It has to be something that connects with you. It has to be something, you know, as you're talking about those cockroaches, what was the situation that you were in? What did it look like? What did it smell like? and getting that to relate to things that they have been through, even if it's a newbie, even if it's somebody that hasn't been there very long, still getting that in. And of course, thank you, TikTok, we want things more visual. We want things to show up, we want pictures, we want all of that, okay? So with this, with adult learning, and this is the funny part, you know, considering we have the attention span of a goldfish, and I do too, because I just changed topics here, Think of this as a CEU class. CEUs for just about all states still have to be an hour. Why do we have to have trainings for an hour? Why can't they be 30 minutes? Why can't they be 15 minutes? And I'll come back to that too, but think about that. So when we talk about trainings, again, if most of them that we see, whether it's a webinar, whether it's a CEU, they, they're about an hour. That, that's just been so standard for so long. But if you think about it, a lot of trainings can be shorter, especially if we're focusing on that one topic. I just did a 30 minute small fly training that we just talked about small flies in restaurants. That was the topic, went for about 25 minutes. We had five minutes for questioning, which went on to about 10. That was it, 30 minutes of training. Can you fit 30 extra minutes into your schedule? You know, what, what's your morning meeting like? Can it be 15 minutes? Think about some of the safety training that you might do. 15 minutes to go through ladder safety again. And, you know, hopefully if we can do this in your office on a webinar, that's not too bad. You're sitting there, you're in front of a computer, but what if you have to go somewhere? Again, time is money. So I'm in Atlanta, Georgia here. If I need to get my fumigation credits for my fumigation license, I have to go over to Athens, Georgia in January to go to a conference because it's the only place I can get fumigation credits for my license to keep it up to date. So now I have to drive two hours to get to Athens. I probably have to stay overnight. And that's gonna cost me a lot of money to do that for four credits that I need. And they're usually really boring because fumigation is not boring, but there's nothing new. I mean, fumigation, nothing, nothing has changed in fumigation in about 20 years. So, so think of that, you know, when you're thinking of training, where is it? How can it be presented, um, you know, with that physical aspect of it? And how often can you realistically do it? You folks are on this webinar here today, but can you be on a webinar every single day for an hour? 
I'm guessing the answer to that is no. You know, but you do have team meetings. Many of you probably have team meetings. Um, you know, 30 minutes in the morning, once a week. Or um, I have another group that that we do an hour uh, every the last Wednesday of every month. They're all in the office in the afternoon, so we all get together then and do trainings then. And of course, CEUs. If it has to be, if you're looking for those credits, you have to go through the state. You have to follow those rules. And, and they are pretty rigid in some states. Some states are a little bit easier. Some states, you can't get credits. The only way you can get credits is by going to one of their state seminars. So it really depends on what state you're in, if you can get credits or not. Again, we go back to the time and the money factor. So the excuses that I hear all the time, let's go back to the beginning and let's go back to that first poll question. You said it would be beneficial to have more training. So the excuses always are, well, I, I don't have the time. You know, if I take a tech out of the field, that means they aren't servicing accounts. That means we're not making money. Okay, fair enough. But what's your callback rate? How much does a callback cost you? If we do better training, people can provide a better service. They can fix those problems faster. Customers are happier. That can lead to more referrals, which can lead to more money. So thinking about this as that kind of instant gratification versus delayed reaction, you know, you can get your piece of candy right now and have that tech out in the field and, you know, make your money off those two residential accounts that they went to, or you can have that delayed reaction and get 20 pieces of candy because now they're servicing better. They can actually service more. You have fewer callbacks. So it's, it's that instant gratification versus delayed reaction aspect of this. Then, it, then we talk about conferences. Uh, if anybody's going to NPMA next week, I will see you in Boston and NPMA. That's not cheap. <laughs> For some of the, the folks that exhibit the vendors there, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe how much they pay to, to be there and, and have booths on the exhibit hall floor. So this definitely costs a lot of money. However, there's usually new research. There's, there's researchers there. There's scientists from universities that have been working on things that are able to give you new information about better products, better treatment methods, um, which again is going to lead to better service, fewer callbacks, happier customers, more referrals, more money. But that one again is going to be a lot. Now, maybe it's just a state conference that you're going to and it's just down the street. Awesome. That's still taking techs out of the field, still costs some money to go. You still got to pay that registration fee. But again, do we want that instant gratification or do we want people learning this? And it could be too that one person goes to the, the you know, whatever state association meeting you're having and brings that all back to people and relays that information. And you have a meeting about the conference. Lots of different ways you can do this. Uh, this is my favorite. Uh, I hear this quite a bit. Um, my techs know what to do. My, my, people, my people have been doing this. They know what to do. Yeah. <sighs> Had a guy once, I, I was working in this feed mill and uh, the feed mill was a mess. There were mice running all over this place and it was a disaster. And I looked at the mill manager and I said, you really need to clean some of this up. I mean, there, there's feed all over the floors. This is going on. Some of this needs to get cleaned up. And he looked at me and goes, I'm not gonna clean because tomorrow it's just gonna get dirty. And I looked at him, I said, do you never take showers? Because you know, you're just gonna get dirty the next day. At that point, one of my coworkers stepped in front of me and said, let's go look at that over there. So yes, you've got some knowledge. Yes, tomorrow is going to be a lot of the same stuff that you did today. That doesn't mean that you're doing it right, that you're doing it in the most effective way possible. New research, new information, new ways of doing things, new products that can help you. And you know, this when I get this excuse, I know there's pretty much no hope for this because if I get the excuse of my techs know what to do, they don't value training. Um, they're, they're that one, one percent that says, yeah, we're good. I don't need it anymore. Another excuse, it's boring. They don't learn anything. And I get this again, I have to go through fumigation training every single year and no joke. It is the same training every single year. Do I pretty much tune out and sleep through half of that class? 
yes, I'm not learning anything new. It's boring. They, they haven't even updated the pictures in four years. It's the same pictures. I could probably like give this presentation at that point. So it's an issue. Not going to say it's not. So thinking about what's going on with you, thinking about your situation, your company, the people that are there. Do you have the right topics? What's seasonally applicable? Right now, um, I just found the stupid brown marmorated stink bugs all over my screens last night. So we know that in the South, in Georgia, the brown marmorated stink bugs are, are coming out. Do we need training on that? Can we train the people in this area? Looking at your callbacks, what are most of your callbacks for? Okay, There's usually a theme in callbacks. And if you dig into your callbacks, you can start to see that theme. You can start to read that story. And if you're getting a lot of callbacks on, say, ants, maybe you need some extra training on ants. And honestly, what do you want? You know, what, what do you want for your people? What kind of training do you want? It's, you know, in some cases, all about you, which is awesome. So that brings us to what can we do about this? What, what, what trainings are out there? What can we use? What can we do? I want to make sure I'm still on time. Okay, on time here. So you can do something free. There's a lot of free options out there. Okay, you're, you're on a free webinar right now. Yay, how awesome is that? But you didn't get to choose what the topic was today. So whatever the online or in-person one is, that, that topic is usually set. You don't get to say, hey, can, instead, can we talk about cockroaches? No, we're talking about training. That's all you get. The times are usually set. Again, you're on here at 1.30 Central Time, 2.30 Eastern Time. If you're in Hawaii, good morning. Great to see you. It's set. You don't have any travel time. You can do it sitting at your desk. You can do it in bed. You can do it in your truck. However you want to do it, no travel time. You're sitting there in front of your computer screen. However, sometimes with online trainings, are you getting an expert? I will not claim I'm an expert on training. I will claim that I'm good at training and I know my fields. I can talk to you all day about urban pests, IPM, food industry, but am I, am I really an expert on training? Um, I don't know, we'll have to review that. So maybe you're getting an expert, maybe it's somebody who isn't quite an expert, but that's what you get with free, right? Some other free options. Um, you can sometimes get people to come to you. A lot of vendors, uh, you know, your, your regional vendors um, will happily come to you and give you a training. Uh, sometimes if you have a local researcher, if you're by Virginia Tech or University of Florida or Kansas State University, uh, California's got one. I'm trying to think of who has urban pest management departments. If you're near that, maybe you can get one of the prof professors to come talk to your folks. And a lot of times, again, they will happily do that for free. However, love the university folks. They can be a little lacking in real world experience sometimes. They've got this great presentation about all this research that they've done. And you look at them and you're like, does that kill the cockroach faster? And they're like, I don't know. And you're like, okay, whatever. So, you know, with, with researchers, again, just remember they're in a very different world that they work in. If you have an extension agent, um, most of the extension agents, I admit, are more focused on agriculture, but there are a few great extension agents out there that do a lot of urban pest management. So find out who your county extension agent is or your state extension agent. Mention the vendors. The, the drawback with vendors is that they're obviously going to talk about their product. They're there, they're spending their time and money to be there to train you. Of course, they're gonna talk about their products. So that's not a bad thing, but you will miss out on anything else, any other product that might be good too. The benefit to this option of having an outsider come in is of course, you get to choose the topic. You get to say, Shell, we want to talk about ants. We talk about ants. And again, timing is a little bit flexible with that. There's also podcasts, webcasts. Um, some of them are certainly better than others. Some of them are for more entertainment value than education value. Uh, again, quality, quality is sometimes there, sometimes not. Uh, again, it's a set topic. You don't get to decide, but you have the flexibility of listening pretty much any time. I'm a total podcast geek. I love podcasts and I have them all on my phone and I pick which one I want to listen to when I want to listen to it. 
Another free option is you doing your own training. Um, you know, if you're a manager, a service manager, branch manager, owner, um, whatever, can you do your own training? Um, do you have the, the capacity to do that? Do you have the time to do that? Do you want to do it? In most cases, that last one is usually a no, you don't want to do it, but it is an option. Next option is to put some money behind it, okay? Again, we talked about conferences. Conferences are usually a couple days and, and it hits everything. It's gonna hit most of your major topics. It's gonna get you all your CEUs for the year. And it gives you human interaction. It gives you that conversation with other people that you have over lunch or over happy hour after the third beer and you're talking about the worst mouse situation you've ever been in. And somebody goes, oh my gosh, I was there too. And, and we did this and did you do this? And suddenly you've got all these ideas flowing back and forth. So that's great. Again, your topics are set. Topics are usually set a month in months in advance, six months in advance even. So you don't get to choose. It's what's there. There's a variety of online schools. Um, you know, prices range on that, but you get to pick the topic. You can say, hey, everybody's getting trained on termites. Here's, here's that. And again, you can take these when you want. They're not set schedules that you have to take it at 1.30 central time today usually have some pretty decent trainers on these so they can keep things a little bit lively. Um, and again, what you want, how you want it. And sometimes these can be a little bit more relatable. Um, they'll bring in stories. I know when I do online trainings, even the recorded ones, I try and bring in stories, bring in things that, that can relate to people better. And then you can get outside experts to come in. You know, if you're gonna shell out the dough, hey, they'll come. You know, you can pay for my plane ticket, my ho overnight hotel stay. Absolutely. I'll come and give you a bunch of trainings and it's customizable. If you're going to bring in an outside expert and pay them, you are telling them what you want to talk about, how you want to talk about it. You know, it should be very customized to exactly what you want to do. And this, again, because it's customized, because it's what you want, what your people need right now, it's often a lot more relatable. You know, if we're talking about, you know, spiders right now, great, because it's the fall. We've got those occasional invaders, the fall invaders that are coming in. Awesome. You know, if we're talking about termites right now, probably not the most relatable, unless you're in the South and you're in Florida. Yeah, you get it year round. Sorry. Then we wonder how much they're getting. Again, the more relatable the training is, the better the training is, the better the presenter is, the better retention it's going to be. However, just because you had a training on ants 20 years ago does not mean you still remember that. There is nothing wrong with repetition. Repetition leads to retention. And if you can get that good repetition of it's not quite the same, it's a little bit different every time so that they're paying attention, that it's not my same old fumigation training that hasn't changed in four years, more of it sinks in, more of it gets there. You can even, you know, do some friendly competition. Uh, I used to give a lot of presentations on stored product pests and you want to talk about a pest that hasn't changed in thousands of years. I mean, how many different ways can you say that a red flower beetle is about a yay big reddish brown beetle that looks like a whole bunch of other reddish brown beetles? Um, we started playing games. Uh, I had a Jeopardy edition. Uh, we had a Trivial Pursuit edition. We had people in teams, you know, I'm still giving the same information, but I'm actually making them give it back to me. I'm asking, you know, what does the antennal structure on a red flower beetle look like versus a confused flower beetle? First team to ring in, they've got it. Everybody hears the answer. They're still getting the information. It's just in a different format. And I, I'm always one for a little friendly competition, especially if you put a couple prizes there. Oh yeah, I'm totally in. Dangling that carrot, giving them something for it. Hey, you pass this training. Here's a $5 gift card. Or, you know, you do eight of these trainings and we give you a raise. Dangle something in front of them. Um, if they want it, they're going to do it. If they're just like, eh, I don't even care about the reward. They don't want the training. Don't waste your money on it if you don't have to. So my recommendations, uh, again, I have been in this industry for, I've been in the pest control industry for over a decade now. I've worked with big companies. I've worked with small companies, um, did presentations as a researcher. So my recommendation is to do a longer training. And by longer, I, half an hour, 
45 minutes maybe. If you can do an hour, great, but do one of those a month. One of those, again, try and target it to what's going on. Try and do some mini trainings, five, 10 minutes. Maybe it's reading an article or maybe it's reading somebody's blog post. Do one of those weekly just to keep it sinking in, those little tips, those little tricks, everything like that, and make it as engaging as possible. Uh, it's, it's hard to make webinars engaging. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm doing that for you folks. But you know, find ways, especially if you're doing training in an office situation, hand out some candy for every answer that you get. It doesn't even have to be a right answer. Just you answered, here's a piece of candy. Here's, here's your favorite chocolate. That incentive you know, gets people going and gets people a little bit more engaged because, ooh, I, I like those, those Milky Way darks. I'm, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to try for it. So that helps get those people that may be a little bit quieter that, you know, at that adult learning that we're afraid to answer wrong, um, you know, foster that, foster that attitude of, what do you think? Cool, that's a good, good idea. What else do we have? Um, Open-ended questions sometimes can really help with that and get that conversation going. Um, for a lot of people, you may have 10, 20, 30 people in your office. Um, bring in the office staff. Uh, one of my previous uh, jobs, once a year, we did an IPM and stored product pest uh, presentation for them once a year for the office staff. So they understood what we were doing. We, they understood the processes, which allowed them to do their job better and faster with fewer errors in their paperwork, which was great for a one hour training once a year. Bottom line, it's your choice. Do you want a free training that maybe isn't exactly what you want? Or do you want to shell out some dough and go to a conference or pay somebody to come in and give you that workshop, give you that, that list of presentations? There are plenty of options out there. So depending on what you want and what you need, you should be able to find something. Consider what's best for you and your people. Um, I'm sure we have some technicians on here all the way up through managers and owners. What do you think is best? What topics do you think is best? What format do you think is best? And you know, there's no right answer to that. Um, this month, it may be a webinar. Next month, it may be a conference. It can always change. So, and especially when you're looking at the people who are doing these trainings, you know, who can do it? Who has the skills and the knowledge to do that for you? Um, I'll go back to my favorite researchers. Um, they're great. Uh, I was just at a small conference and a researcher, this presentation I've seen four times in a row now. Yeah, four, four years in a row, she has given the same exact presentation. So make sure, especially if you're paying for it, make sure you're getting what you want. Make sure it's customized to you. Um, I'm tired of hearing the same presentation with nothing new. I don't want to go to her talks anymore because I can go to this other talk where I might get something new. So think about those people that you may be hiring, that you may have doing that. Think about who's doing the training. So with that, I think we have one last poll question. Um, hopefully you learned a little something today, maybe something stuck. And I have all of my contact information up there. I am not hard to find. I am very active on LinkedIn. So follow me on LinkedIn if you want. There's my website, my email, my phone number. Yes, I am a millennial. So text me, don't call me. If you really want to, you can. Uh, we can set up a, a free 30 minute meeting. Inspired, thank you. Okay, so yeah, I, I didn't do too bad today. You know, The free webinar was definitely worth the money for you folks, I love it. <clears throat> so with that, I will leave this up for just a minute, but yeah, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Uh, again, I do lots of different training on lots of different paths, and I've been in this industry for over a decade. So I know what you folks go through. I, I know what it's like out there. Um, I, I have that realistic view. I'm not somebody who sits in the office and you know, says, of course, you can do multifamily housing in, you know, 10 minutes. Well, of course, you have eight grad students working for you for free. Of course, you can do that unit in 10 minutes. <sighs> yeah, real world experience. But OK, hopefully you found that. And I will take this down now. And if we have any questions, are we on to questions? Do we have time for questions? How did I do? 
You did wonderfully, Shell. We thank you so much for all of the helpful information. And like you just mentioned, I am guessing that our audience does some, have some questions for you. So everyone, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and submit any questions you have for Shell using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. She will answer as many questions as possible in the time that we have left. And while you're doing that, I'm going to ask that Lynn, our moderator, post a link in the chat to sign up for a free demo of Field Routes. For anyone who is not already a Field Routes customer, this is a great opportunity to experience our operations and marketing suites firsthand. She is also going to post a link in email to learn more about 360 Pest and Food Safety Consulting. So our first question is... AMA are, time, ask me anything. <laughs> are there any really popular topics people are training on right now? Uh, right now, definitely the fall invaders. Um, so, you know, your, your lady beetles, your stink bugs, your spiders, you know, all that stuff that, that gets in the fall and rodents. Rodents are very big now. I think we had a really big rodent population this summer. Um, so rodent populations have been high and I've been getting a lot of requests to do rodent training, especially, especially mice. Okay. I just saw another question come in. Oh, Oh, this is a comment, not a question, just a comment. Shell, I learned a lot from your presentation today and I will be implementing some of the material in my future training session. Yeah, remember training doesn't have to be huge. We have this, this idea that training has to be at least one hour, or this huge conference. Training can be five minutes. Training can be a quick text message of, you know, Tuesday trivia, did you know termite queens can live 40 years? Training can be short and simple and fun. I love that. It's almost like we have to redefine what we think of as training. Mm -hmm. Awesome. How much does it cost to have a person um, come in to mm -hmm. train? Yeah, that's a good one. It's going to vary um, by who you want and what their experience and knowledge is and where they're coming from. Uh, I'm here outside of Atlanta. I can easily do a webinar, which is gonna cost you much less than if you want me to go out to California and do a half day training workshop with you. So that cost can really vary depending on what you want, who you want and where their location is. But that's a really good question to ask if you are you know, looking for that outside trainers, how, you know, what is the price point on this? You know, what can we do? to to make this work it's you know it's, it's a very fair question to ask very good aside from ceus for licensing are there any other training requirements um pcos need to have oh um it depends on what accounts you're servicing um so again i think i mentioned that i do gmp training so the food industry food processing requires good manufacturing practices training every year you need a refresher every year so um, you may need that training if you are in um, pharmaceuticals there are very specific trainings that you must go through um, that they will provide to you because it's their rules to make sure that everything is super incredibly safe because i mean when you get down to pharmaceuticals it's like baby products everything has to be absolutely perfect so you'll have to go through some of that training um, you may have to go through wildlife training if you're doing any wildlife work um, some states require a separate license some don't so depending on what you need and what that is but yeah look at the particularly the commercial accounts that you're working in some of those larger commercial accounts they may have specific requirements specific safety requirements as well that you might need to be trained on very good, thank you. And that is actually our last question and that is going to wrap us up. We thank you so much again, Shell, for being with us. Thank you folks. Thank everybody who's who's been on this and took the time to do it. Absolutely, and we thank our attendees for joining us today as well. We hope that you found this valuable. 
Remember to watch your inbox and social media feeds for information on our upcoming growth and tips and tricks series webinars. Everyone have a great day.